Welcome to Who Dares Sins, where you get the opportunity to get something off your chest that you might have had on there for a very long time. It might be bugging you that you haven't told the truth. You might have stitched someone up. You might have done something you're not proud of. Well, let me know, and I'll let everybody else know. If you want to remain anonymous, that's up to you. Or maybe you want everybody to know exactly who it was who sinned. So let's get on with it. This is the first episode of Who Dares Sins, and I'd be a wrong un if I didn't fess up to something myself. So I'm going to fess up now, and I'm going to give you two stories that I think need to be out there and have been in the closet for long enough now. It was a long time ago, and I was in basic training. Quit the jokes. Anyway, <laughs> I was proud to be there. I enjoyed it. It was good fun. There was a lot of inspections, a lot of screaming and shouting, and a lot of bullying kit. But you put up with it, because you're in basic, aren't you? So it doesn't matter. Now, my full screw was a man called Corporal Vernon, and it's to him I would like to confess. He was an upstanding man. He had a military medal. He'd been around the globe. He was a full screw. He was my section commander, and I respected him very much. But on this one occasion, we were lined up on parade outside of the block, and the duty Rupert, a guy called Captain Clayton, was going to inspect us. And I saw him coming down the line. The normal questions. Is the mail getting through? How's your mum? You knew the sort of stuff they were capable of. It was small talk, but they were after tripping you up. They wanted to find something wrong. And sure enough, Captain Clayton stopped in front of me. Platoon sergeant was stood behind him, and he looked me up and down, and then horror. He looked at my chin. Campion. A bit posher than that. Campion, you've not had a shave this morning, have you? <laughs> I said, I have, sir. It's the first thing I do every morning. I shave, and I shave well. Campion, you have not had a shave this morning. Sir, sir, I can assure you, I have had a shave this morning. I promise you, I've had a shave. Anyway, the platoon sergeant, he's on a time check. I think we've got to go and do rifle lesson 15 or something, and he wants us out of there. So he chivvies the boss along. The boss moves down the line. Well, anyway, once he's got done doing the front, he turns around and he comes down the back. He's checking over people's shoulders. He's looking at the heels of their boots. And as he pulls up behind me, his head pops around. Campion, you've got shaving foam in your ear. To which I said, I can't have, sir. I never had a shave this morning. <laughs> he went mad. He went absolutely bonkers. He was yelling and screaming, you cheeky so-and-so, you think it's funny now? Anyway, my belt and berry came off and was strewn across the floor quicker than I could draw my next breath. And before I know it, my knees are going up and down. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Off to the guard room I went. Off to the guard room. I happily went for a bee sting with a nice, big, shiny wombat shell and a portly Provo sergeant who took delight in beasting crow. And I was said crow, and I was being beasted. Now, my admission to this story and my confession to Corporal Vernon is I never had a shave. But I think he knows that. <laughs> I finished basic training. And I arrived at my battalion in Tidworth. Now, they'd just done an operational tour in Northern Ireland, South Armagh. They'd all been through the mill. They'd all worked hard. They'd all done tremendous stuff. They all had a medal. And here we were, three of us, crow bags, freshly out of basic training, not a medal between us, not a war story between us, and nothing to say other than, oh, it was good fun in basic training, wasn't it? I had nothing to chat about. So as being crow, as well as running up to the naffy and doing all the bidding for everybody else. You're searching for that opportunity to make a name for yourself. 
You want to be off the bottom of the pile. You don't want to be the bottom forever. Anyway, we ended up on a massive exercise on Salisbury Plain. And at the time, we had these hideous bits of kit called a Saxon. Now, they didn't know how to use the Saxons properly. It was a big armoured box with wheels. And they said that it was going to replace the four-tonner. Only, when it came a push to a shove, it didn't replace the four-tonner. But what it did do was give these scrawny little second lieutenants an excuse to roar around the battlefield in what they thought was a tank, all right? It wasn't a tank. They didn't know how to use it, and they didn't know what they were doing. But in these exploratory stages of finding out what they wanted to do with this piece of kit, Crowbag here found himself on an exercise with the whole battalion doing an advance to contact, and my section was right at the very lead. So how was this going to work out? There was a whole snake. It was going to go down onto the battlefield. It was going to be a start line. We were all going to roll across it. And at a set time, we were going to debus and we were going to fight forward. You know the rest. It's an advance to contact. It's an easy day out. But the Saxon was hampering things a little bit. Now, we did a few rehearsals before we were going to set off. And I twisted my ankle jumping out the back of the Saxon. It hurt. It proper hurt. But moreover, when I went to stand up, I could hardly stand. I had my Bergen on, my pack on, and all the rest of it, and I couldn't stand up. And my platoon command, my platoon commander looked across and said, it's camp, you know, okay. And Corporal, Corporal Matthews looked up and said, well, he appears to have hurt himself, sir. He can't stand up properly. To which the Rupert said, well, Corporal Matthews, you'd better swap places with him. Now, Corporal Matthews' job was up in the cupola, up in the turret, commanding this vehicle. Now, our vehicle was the very first vehicle in the whole advance to contact. So you can imagine we got our vehicle, the support vehicle, the vehicle behind, the rest of the platoon, and then the whole battalion and some brigade assets as well, all hinging on this vehicle at the very front, which now is not being commanded by Corporal Matthews. It's being commanded by Private Crowbag Campion. Okay, so I'm sat up there, and all Mouse told me, Mouse Matthews, Corporal Matthews, all he told me was, when you get the nod, kick the driver, because he'll be asleep, make sure he's awake, and off you go. Job's a good, couldn't have been any simpler. So, we're all sat in there, we're all buckled down, we're all, we're all waiting around, and I see this geezer walk along the side of the vehicle, he looks up, says hello, walks off. I'm like, ah, this is it, we're off. So I boot the driver, I boot him again, he wakes up, come on, drives, let's go. Corporal, uh, private sloper it was at the time, Mark Sloper. I says, come on, Mark, off we go. Oh, starts the thing up, we're rolling down the thing and off we go. As we come to the first sort of like bend and there's a cattle grid to go over and we're now leap, I can see someone screaming, stop, stop, stop. But no, 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 we just keep going. We've been told to go. The driver, Mark, looks up. Shouldn't we stop? No, 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 no. I says, Corporal Matthew says, keep going. So we keep going and keep going and nothing's going to stop us. And then I can hear a commotion in the back of the vehicle. And it's a stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. What the are you up to? I'm being yelled at. I'm being screamed at. Unbeknown to me milling about outside the Saxons before we'd left was one of Mouse's mates. And he's just come up to say hello to Mouse before we go. So he's looked up at the vehicle, looked at me, not realised who it was because I was cammed up and had a helmet up and I was in the cupola behind the weapon, and just waved. It wasn't the, it wasn't the nod to go at all. I'd completely led the whole battalion down the garden path and now they were looking for someone's head to roll. Can you guess whose head went? You can, can't you? It was mine. <laughs> My confession is on that one. I don't care. It was a good laugh. <laughs> and almost a little bit of a claim to fame. And it did give me a little bit of a war story because now I can say I took the whole battalion into battle <laughs> on my own without any help from you lot. So there you go, right? <laughs> That's me done for the day. Hopefully you'll send me some stories in and I'll see you next time.